Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be reviewing Module 8 from the Universe to the Atom and in particular the third inquiry question, the quantum mechanical nature of the atom. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, Module 8 is called From the Universe to the Atom. Now, the module is divided up into five key inquiry questions, and those inquiry questions really ask some important questions about our understanding of the elements. And in particular, as we look at the inquiry questions, we see or our understanding of science develops as we build models based on evidence. So the first inquiry question asks the question, what evidence is there for the origin of the elements? The second inquiry question asks, how is it known that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? In essence, we're dealing with the atomic structure. The third inquiry question asks, how is it known that classical physics cannot explain the structure of the atom? So we're really addressing the quantum mechanical model. The fourth inquiry question digs deeper and asks, how can the energy of the nucleus be harnessed? So I'm just gonna simplify it by just writing the nucleus. And going deeper still, the last inquiry question says, how is it known that a human understanding of matter is incomplete? And throughout these questions, starting from the origins to the further exploration, going deeper and deeper to our understanding of matter, what we also cover as we do these inquiry questions, we examine how over a period of about 150 years, that evidence resulted in the development of models and those models were challenged and revised and thrown out as more evidence came in. And so that process is an important process to also appreciate in this particular module. In our previous inquiry question, we looked at particularly a classical model of the atom. The work of Rutherford, Thomson and Chadwick developed a classical model of the atom where the atom was made up of discrete particles, namely the protons, neutrons and electrons. But the model itself was incomplete and it failed to address some key problems. And this is where the third inquiry question looks at. And we look particularly at the work of three scientists here. And the first issue is, is why do electrons stay in orbit in the first place? Shouldn't they be radiating energy according to Maxwell's theories? if they are accelerating, which they clearly are if they're moving in a circular orbit. And that came first to our work of Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr modified Rutherford's model by saying that the electrons can exist in discrete orbits without releasing any particular energy. And that if they were to move from one energy level to another energy level, the amount of energy they release is described by the formula E equals HF. And of course, we examined that in module seven. And so we have now what, a, what we refer to as the Rutherford Bohr model. It's a planetary model, but the electrons exist in discrete particular orbits. And in fact, that's the model you often see in media these days when they talk about the atom. It's a planetary model that's modified by Bohr's understanding that the electrons exist in discrete non-energy releasing orbits. But the model itself has its limitations. Apart from the fact that it could only explain hydrogen, it did not explain why electrons exist in discrete orbits. That leads us to the next scientist, and that's Louis de Broglie. And Louis de Broglie advanced an even further model by saying the electrons can exist in discrete orbits if we don't treat them as particles, we treat them as waves. In particular, we treat them as standing waves. And each energy level results to a different harmonic of those standing waves. And so what we now have is a model where the electron now has not only particle-like properties, it also has wave-like properties. Sound familiar? Well, if you remember in module seven, we looked at light and light was treated as a wave type phenomena, but through Einstein's work, particularly on the photoelectric effect, we now know that light can have particle-like properties. It interacts with matter as if it was existing as particles. So we have this wave-particle duality of light, and now what we have is this wave-particle duality of matter itself. And in particular, we're dealing here with the electrons. And so this model was developed in the mid 1920s, but within a couple of years, the work of Davidson and Germer showed, in fact, 
evidence to support this particular model, where electrons were shown to not only diffract, but also have interference patterns. And that means it's acting like a wave. The third person we examine then is Edwin Schrodinger. And Edwin Schrodinger advanced the model once again. De Broglie specifically was looking at hydrogen as a way of explaining the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. Schrodinger said, well, what about all the other elements? Do they also have wave-like properties in terms of the electrons? And so he developed a new model where the electrons are now not described as just single standing waves, but specifically as an electron cloud. And a cloud now is not in terms of a cloud like you have in the sky, but a cloud of probability, the probability of finding an electron in any one place. And this particular cloud is then described in terms mathematically as waves. So we have a modification of the de Broglie model to a more robust model of what we refer to as the Schrodinger model of the electron cloud model of the atom. And it is a better model than we had of Bohr, which of course was a better model than we had previously with the Rutherford and JJ Thompson. Well, I hope that it helped you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.